Morning folks. <clears throat> well I did this is one one of the two I did yesterday. That one there. Sort of meadow. Very limited palette. Um, when I say limited palette, I, my my basic landscape is uh, Payne's Grey, uh, sap green and red ochre. Some auxiliary some colours would be uh, cadmium red, ultramarine, and a cup uh, yellow ochre maybe for the sky, and a yellow to modify the green for foliage. But I want to paint some rough ground. I'll try and paint rough ground as, as a meadow. But whereas I had a sort of a horizontal horizon, uh, I want to do something similar to what I did first, which I called rambling. Uh, I'll just take off some stuff of the planet. I've got some some linseed oil here, mixed with a bit of uh, alkyd resin, just to help the thing dry. And I'm just using using these these brushes they're very inexpensive that one's lost most of the tips of the hairs you can clean the, the oil out of these um, provided you run them through your towel to get the most of the muck off um, and with a bit of dishwasher washing up liquid and some some, uh, some some water or you can leave them standing in, in washing powder solution of washing powder that's very very good but it does leave a bit of a slimy feel to the brushes and you have to give them a really good rinse afterwards but enough of that I'm wasting time just mentioning all that so we'll we'll start with a foreground and we'll have some nice nice red ochre this is just a bit of Fabriano studio paper. Just bunk someone. One side different to the other. Uh, now bracken, bracken. Fern. I noticed perhaps for the first time always it was something I'd always taken for granted and that was the dead ferns at the end of the season well they're not dead they're just getting ready for new growth this year but you, it's the sort of things you take for granted you don't give it a second thought it's just rubbish on the ground dead but <laughs> it gives a wonderful uh, colour under your landscape and I've noticed all landscapes in in the UK are and probably Europe and everywhere else are basically the green green a green and a red Something you, you you don't notice. It's there, but it's not there, if you know what I mean. You're looking at the trees or the, the distance and the landscape or some buildings. But uh, you overlook this wonderful colour of undergrowth. And you can go over it with your greens and so on and make something of it. But it's there. It's like shadows. Shadows should be there, but not really seen. Does that make sense? Well, let's just get in some some of this. I'll use a bit of bit of blue as well in this as I go. But I'm using some Payne's grey and some red. Just get a okay. Just any old sort of shape. We're after tones and texture. Let's get that right up there then. Now I don't want it to look even either. Uh, 
Yeah, I could a bit blue in that. about this one here. That's quite a good shape. Let's have that going off the paper now. Uh, over the other side we'll uh, get that blue, mix in some of that. By using a bit of blue, get some some silhouette. We all love silhouettes, don't we? We paint left handed. Look at that. I might leave that, leave a, a gap going through that. Get some good darks in there. The oil is soaking right into the paper now. And there'll come a time when it won't take any more. So then you can start painting on the surface. Okay. The oil will come through the paper. If it, this is a hundred and thirty pound weight, but it doesn't matter. It, when it's dry, you can mount it as a watercolor or as a uh, stick it on a piece of MDF and get a frame for it and frame it like an oil. Right, let's have a bit of some, some red in there. We can. I'm just using light red here and some cadmium yellow. Just wonder if that would make a bit of light in there. No, probably not. Right, let's uh, clean the brush. Well, no, I won't. I'll leave it to one side. I'll use another one. And put in some texture. Let's get some nice green. Mix in the green with the uh, red. The darker you've got your background, the more the lights will show. Obviously, you get a good contrast. But uh, as a, a technique, it's different than the, the way, when you paint on the boards. But you can't scrape out. So it's a totally different approach. <coughs> I'll put in lots of dark in here so that we can go over that with some lighter lighter reds. 
Just building up some some lighter textures on that. Let's have some uh, that's red and uh, more orange. It's a red and uh, cadmium yellow. A bit of white, just a touch. The light coming through there. Coming on, I'll go into the sky soon, but I just want to get some of that the light texture. I'll use a bit of ochre. You get lost in this. Oh, I'll get some red in there now. And I'll use my other brush. I uh, bought a pack of brushes, these uh, cheapos. But in being cheap, they do things that the more refined brushes don't do, like great texture. Just add a bit of warm in there. No, I'll, I'll put some. I will put some texture in those uh, trees. I'm going to do some sky now. So I want a, quite a light sky to to silhouette these trees. But skies are never white. There's always some colour in them. But so my, I like to use a bit of ochre. Touch of light red. I 
and just go for it. Blot out some of that. Feather the edges. Once the uh, the oil has soaked into the paper, it'll uh, take more paint. Just a bit of bit of light red in in that white. I mean, these are very easy to do. I, you'll be surprised if you've never done one before, especially on the primed MDF with the, like the gesso, well gessoed and sanded MDF. The small pictures you can use two millimeter MDF is very light, very tough, extremely tough. And then there's the uh, the three millimeter, which comes up more like a softer uh, hardboard which is shiny on both sides but MDF if you don't know what I don't know what your trade name might be in your country for MDF but medium density fiber board it's a sort of material made from compressed highly compressed sawdust I suppose or dust with dust and glue um, and the thicker stuff is used for making furniture, routing. You can make doors out of it, all sorts of, with routers to put shapes in. It's a very versatile material. And I, a friend of mine used to, well, he, he, he used it when I became friends with him. That's what he was painting on. But he was using five millimeter MDF, which is very, very heavy, especially if you're gonna hang it on your wall. So I'll be putting the, the leaves back on this, but, but I suppose the bracken would be there in the winter as well as the summer. It'll always be there till it rots away. I will put a bit of cloud in this and lighten up, but this is just the first sort of wash. Get that nice and light in there. All the way around that. That's a horrible shape, but we'll alter that. Oh, well that's, that's the basis for it, they like triffids. Clean the brush. Let's go back and do a bit of the uh, foreground now. Well that's just soaking in. But using oil, actually using oil, it, 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 
a lot of oil. It um, it's a wonderful experience. I knew a guy called Laszlo Ritter. I didn't know him well. I, we, we were exhibiting in the same gallery, but I wasn't a patron on him. He did commissions for Harrods, Harrods customers, and he was a friend of the forger Tom Keating. And Laszlo could paint in any any impressionist style. And his Venice paintings were breathtaking. And he would use a load of oil. Oil would be running down the down the, the canvas. And, but his paintings were selling for lots of money then. I don't think they're valuable now. But he, he used a lot of oil. A lot of stipple. A lot of glazing. Great painter. You, that, that, you probably find him on... Uh, Google. There were some uh, chocolate boxy ones, but um, his Coro, his Coro uh, paintings based on Coro, the style, were breathtaking. But sadly, he died. Uh, he couldn't finish the paintings. He'd start, but he. He couldn't, uh, well, it's just a shame really, but I, I sort of took over in the gallery from him, but I wasn't anywhere near as good. We both worked from the same reference material, because we did. I didn't make them up then, but he could, he could change a photograph, make it his own, wonderful. Really great artist. Wow. I'm actually a bit of blue with a green here. Right, I need to put in some, break up some of some of that outline now with some slightly ochre. Right, well, let's go back to what I was going to do in the foreground. So let's mix a bit of that light red with some white. When you do this sort of stuff, you can actually pat yourself on the back for doing a, a totally original piece. But you're making it up. Nobody else has done it. I say that to beginners mainly. Bit of ochre in there. We're making a picture, a piece of art, we're trying to, not a copy of anything. Get some nice light coming through that centre here. And of course you should always paint to please yourself. Unless you're doing a commission, I don't like commissions. If my two offspring um, want me to do one for, for friends of theirs, I'll, I will. <coughs> but not, 
as a sort of a living, make a living out of it. You can't do what you want to do. You, you, you're painting to order, really, and it's like someone asks you to do their cottage, their country cottage. Oh, can you put roses around the doors and the windows, like rose cottage? And in reality, they haven't got any. No roses at all, but they just want to idealise it. That sort of thing. And making art, like this is a, it's a lot easier than painting rose cottages, I can tell you. I've done it. Okay, I'll be putting that right. Come here. Get back some green, some nice green. I'll mix the green with with some of this cage yellow. There's nothing in the book that says you can't add yellow to your sap green. So from two or three, three or four colours you can you've got a wide range of secondary colours. Just a bit of texture there. So a bit of bit of orangey colour, bit of bit of warm in there. Sort of autumny colour coming in here. Painting on watercolour paper is, uh, has always been done using oils. Constable, Turner, to name but two. Right, now I want some, some good light on the top of this meadow. Now I'm going to use some, some ochre. Just to enliven that area there. Look at that contrast. I might do some watercolours tomorrow. Do something with that there.
Now I've got to get a bit of light in there. Right, so we've got that breakthrough there now. And we can, bit of ochre, bit of... Let's get some dark, just a little bit of a texture in there. I haven't thought much about the sky yet. I'm just lost in the uh, this wilderness here. Bit of yellow, bit of red, a uh, bit of green. Now we want to get some red, light red in here. Just lose a lot of the detail, just merge it, blend, soft, soft, soft blending. That light red, light red, well red ochre, is lovely when it's mixed with a bit of white. Look, you go with pink. Oh, let's just lose that detail there. I probably need a bit, bit, a bit more height in there to uh, stop you falling off the edge of the painting. So we'll do that. Get some red and yellow, a bit of paints, a bit of blue. Right, well, that's a bit better. That has got to be works out. Well, it's going to be white, a touch of red. Let's uh, work around there, just a slightly off, 
of white Put some of that light back in the leaves or the what's left of them. Right, I don't think I want to do much more to the sky. I don't want it to contrast to, to this. I, it's a backdrop. I don't want to make a, a star of the, of, the back, of the sky and a star of the foreground because it, you won't know where to look. I need to get more light back in there. Uh, so I'll just do a little bit on this foreground. Bit of, bit of ochre, a bit of white. Quite a rough paper. Right now, a few wildflowers. So let's dip the brush in the in the cad red. Puppies, counts for change with the green, complement the green. So this would be more rough ground. Put them close to the greens. All right, now some whites.
Oh, okay, I'm going to put that in a bounce. Right, okay, now then, about the old to a trusty. So if these are any good, do they, they can be varnished when they're dry, completely dry. Oops. bottom just to hold it flat for that over for a little bit. Alright. Where's my other one gone? One, two, three, four. Well there we are, it's it's more like a pastel. <coughs> So the lovely thing about the, the, these, uh, this way of painting, you can hardly tell the difference between that and an oil pastel from where I am. Let's uh, bring you round a bit so you can see it. Uh, zoom out. Okay, well there it is, another meadow to complement the one I did yesterday. I hope you like that folks. Thanks for looking in, I, 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 I might, oh yeah I should do that while, I, while I'm at it, shouldn't I? Just get some light in here. Okay, well, I'll do. I'll get this uploaded for you and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.